fungus and welcome to the first channel about fungi. Today I am going to talk about highly fascinating topic – asexual reproduction of lichens. Lichens are unique organisms formed from a symbiotic relationship between fungi and photosynthetic partners such as green algae or cyanobacteria, functioning as a single biological unit. The biology of lichens enables them to reproduce both sexually and asexually. Regarding asexual reproduction, lichens have several methods. One method involves only the microbiome, while another involves both organisms, the fungus and the algae. The primary structure of asexual reproduction is the pycnidium. Pycnidia are small, flask-shaped globules, chamber-like structures often embedded within the thallus, the main body of the lichen. Pycnidia are the fruiting body of the microbiome. They produce asexual spores called pycnidiospores or simply conidia. It's important to emphasize that these asexual spores contain genetic information identical to that of the parental organism. Reproduction via pycnidia involves only the microbiome and the released conidia dispersed without the photobiont. This peculiarity can often be disadvantageous for lichen formation. In order to form a new lichen, pycnidiospores must encounter a suitable photobiont in the environment which can be very challenging. To the naked eye, pycnidia often appear as black dots or clusters on the thallus surface. Another mean of reproduction of lichens is ceridia. Ceridia are small spherical clumps of a few algal cells wrapped around by fungal hyphae. Size of ceridia varies between 20 and 100 micrometers, depending on the lichen species. It's one of the most common means of reproduction in many lichens. Ceridia typically form within the photobiont layer and emerge through cracks, pores, or disintegration of the thallus surface. In some lichen species, ceridia may appear anywhere on the lichen body, while in the other, their production is restricted to specific areas, known as soralia, which can vary in shape. For example, soralia may appear as linear cracks on the thallus surface or develop a swelling beneath the surface that eventually rupture and release ceridia. Also, lip-like soralia are found on the margins of the thallus blobs. Ceridia are dispersed continuously in large amounts, often landing near the parental lichen thallus. However, they can also be carried by the wind over distances of tens of meters and, in exceptional cases, hundreds or even thousands of kilometers, allowing lichens to colonize new territories far from the origin. Additionally, ceridia are effectively dispersed by invertebrates such as mites, ants, and snails, which transport them as they move through their environment. They give lichens a significant advantage because both partners can spread together at the same time. This eliminates the need for lichens to find a compatible algae, which can be a highly challenging task in the environment. Beyond their role in dispersal, ceridia can also act as a source of photobionts for other lichens. Experimentally, ceridia have been studied primarily for their potential in lichen synthesis in vitro and for viability testing. However, successful laboratory synthesis of lichens remains rare, and the factors involving in these processes are still not fully understood. Icidia are minute outgrowths emerging from the surface of lichen thallus, typically measuring between 50 micrometers and about 1 millimeter in length. Usually, Icidia have columnar structure and are composed of both fungal hyphae and photobiont cells. Icidia presence often gives the thallus a distinctive fuzzy appearance, especially in areas where they are densely packed, creating a clear contrast with Icidium-free regions that appear smoother and more defined. Icidia are highly fragile structure and they can be easily broken by various agents such as wind, rainwater, or animals if they are land in a favorable environment, they can give rise to new lichens, contributing to the spread and survival of these species across different habitats. Beyond their role in reproduction, Icidia, while still attached to the parental thallus, significantly increase its surface area. This enhancement boosts the lichen's ability to exchange gases and perform photosynthesis, a benefit particularly crucial in environments where maximizing these processes is essential for survival. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting fungal adventures!